Hello, how's it going? So as you can see, Jones Organ is still here. It's still running and doing what it does and stuff like that. Uh, you'll notice that the room is still pretty cramped. In fact, it's getting more cramped because we're trying to fit more things into it. Well, we're picking back up the organ projects. One of the first projects is going to be knocking down the wall that the Teletubbies are on, which is behind you. And then another wall behind that. There's a couple of storage rooms back there and it's going to open up this room more than twofold. It's gonna be it's gonna be a big boy. And we're gonna be filling it with more interesting musical oddities, electromechanical music items, air-powered music items, and dotted in some funky organ technology. All of the sort of electronic musical instruments that are off the beaten path of synthesizers and the usual things that we focus on. If you've seen any of my videos, you may have heard me mentioning Lucien Nunez Vaz. In fact, the first one was in the pianola video where we got Lucien's pianola and took it apart, had a look at it worked and then bashed it back together. I learned a lot about the mechanics of self-playing pianos in that video and I hope you did too. Well as you may or may not know Lucian was working towards setting up a pretty big uh, technology uh, museum called Meet and he spent the last two decades and beyond collecting a massive collection of technology from the 20th century. However, in 2021, he was very sadly diagnosed with cancer and he passed away last year. This collection has been split up between various museums and collectors. And we have got a few interesting items and we're gonna be focusing on them in videos. And you can also come and see these at This Museum's Not Obsolete. The information is below on that. There's a few items we're working on from the Lucien Nunez Vaz collection that we haven't done videos on quite yet because obviously you do a video near the end of the process. And if you wanna see those and support the museum and the video making, then go and check it out over on Patreon because the support really makes it more possible to make this project a much bigger and better project. And you get to see more videos and download songs and this and that. Anyway, today's video is focusing on one of Lucian's uh, later recoveries. It is Mr. Stockdale's Theatrone. Ooh. Now, Mr. Stockdale lived up near Leeds and what built what can only be described in two outhouses at the back of his house, a pretty epic theater organ setup. In the middle of it was two extremely rare Compton organs. One of them was actually possibly the first electronic organ in the UK. And the other one had similar provenance. How Mr. Stockdale managed to get two of the rarest electronic organs in the UK it was still a mystery. But the two organs have headed over to East Midland Cinema Organ Association to be restored back to original. However, if you look at this image around the organs, you'll notice there are a lot of other items, including xylophones, vibrations, Phones, chimes, even car horns and arugas. Well, all of the electromechanical stuff around the organs, uh, this museum is not obsolete, has got hold of. And we're going to have a look at them today. I'm not completely up on the story of the Theatrone, but Mr. Stockdale passed away and the house got sold. His daughter really didn't want this stuff getting chucked away. And Lucian, very late on in life, actually uh, went to go and recover it just so it didn't get conked and chucked in the skip. With help from friends, he managed to recover everything except for the self-playing piano because it was a bit too big and heavy. Let's first, oh, let's first take a look at the vibraphone. Ooh, ah. oh, it's a little bit rickety. Oh. So this was sat next to uh, the Compton organ, or uh, sandwiched in between this and a rotophone, I think. So uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. Like all of the mechanisms, they're all quite interesting. I'm not sure how DIY it is. It might just be a vibraphone that's been bodged on top or it was originally a machine. Maybe you can comment below if you recognize this specific machine, but let's have a look in now and have a chat about the plan of what is going on with this thing. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, it's working. So this is the one that's in the image. And yeah, it's uh, the, the actual trolley's seen better days, but hopefully we're gonna take some weight off it because there's a lot of wires that we don't need. Let's have a look at that first. So at the bottom, there's this big bundle of wires and they've got these connectors. Everything has these connectors. But you know, like with Jones Organ, we're going to midify this. And so it only needs one wire going to it and it also makes it its own instrument. So it could be used separately as well. Um, these would have been wired, I suppose, into a box that was connected to the console. So you flick on the switch, you're able to play the vibraphone on the keys on the Compton. But as you know, the Compton is being put back to original because it's actually quite a rare thing. So we're gonna work with what we've got. Lovely jubbly. <laughs> oh, 
that is a lot of copper. As you can see, the stand is a little bit bent and broken. It's not really built for purpose, but it should be fine once we take a lot of the weight off because this is, that's, that's pretty much half of the weight of the thing. So having a look at the actual mechanisms now, uh, if you remember in a video a while back, we looked at Totem Recall's midified vibraphone. Uh, the mechanism there is quite a bit different to this because it actually has the beaters on the end of solenoids with springs. So they bounce down, hit the vibraphone and then bounce back up. This does it with standard organ relays. These are very similar to the ones inside of Jones Organ's wind chest that open the valves that let the air going into the pipes. And then that's connected via this wobbly rubber stuff, which luckily has not perished. And then that connects to one of the beaters, which ends up hitting it. So if we pretend to energize the coil, Oh, as you can see, some of it's all rickety. It's all still intact, so in theory, this should be a pretty simple job. So if you're not aware, the difference between a vibraphone and a xylophone is a vibraphone actually has these spinning uh, flaps underneath each of the metal finger magoops. What these do is they spin around and let the air in and out of these resonant tubes that are on the bottom that have closed bottoms, so they're closed on the bottom of it. And this modulates the volume and sort of adds a bit of a Doppler effect to the whole thing. Both of these shafts spin around via this motor, which is a big old clunky mains motor. We're actually gonna change this out for a smaller one that's gonna give us more control. And if you look underneath, you'll see that each of these coils have multiple wires going to it because it's wired to multiple switches on the console. This is also gonna be extremely simplified by adding the MIDI uh, like we did with Jones Organ because if you remember at the start with Jones Organ, there was hundreds of wires. That's because there, it was built at a time without diodes and things like that. We've managed to just cut it down to a single wire going to each of these coils. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing here. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna dismantle it. So I'm gonna number all of the beaters because they need to go back into the same place. So um, let's just write a number on the top of all of them. I then started taking it apart, beta by beta, bar by bar. Little by little, it slowly became more and more disemboweled. As time went on, as you can see, I've just got to fill in the blanks and talk over it whilst I'm trying to do this all. And we can get a closer look at the mechanism that makes the vibraphone a wholly different beast to the xylophone. I took that big clunky gear down motor off with the aim of updating it later in the video. Uh, it's a big boy. And then started cutting all the wires and removing this uh, muting bar which lifts up and mutes the bars and we're gonna uh, bolt that in and then I did it all that gave it all a little bit of a clean here's a look at the mechanism of how it can spring back on itself it's basically just a sprung bit of metal that flicks it all back up here's a close-up of seeing where there is multiple gangs of wires so I basically cut every wire but one on each of the coils because we only naturally need one to plug into here you recognize this circuit board from the part two of the Jones organ video it's exactly the same and it works really well. It means that you can plug any old keyboard or MIDI thing into it like a computer to talk to this and make it play it. And as you can see, I was wiring all of the wires into this circuit board. There's a link below to Jones Organ Part 2 if you haven't seen about this because all the files that are available to make this yourself if you want to make your own, you know, electromechanical MIDI-fired thing. And now we're going to test it. We're going to plug it into this MIDI keyboard and see what happens. Ooh. Oh, did you hear that? And look, there's magic smoke. We're not getting that back into those circuit chip thingamagoops. I didn't realize, but there was diodes underneath all of the relay coils, as you can see there. And it, was, it used to be wired in backwards, so how high have it wired in? So it meant that all of the chips were burning. When I clipped those diodes off, as you can see, it's now working, woo! So all of the relays, are wired in right now. So right now, if I just hold on to these, they'll just, and then I lift it off, it's done. It's not got enough weight on them to actually push down because we the beaters will add, push it down a little bit further and there's less travel for it to travel. Let's put the bars and the beaters back on and see what it sounds like. I 
vibraphone mechanism sounds lovely. Let's get that going. So I made this out of an Arduino and there's an optolo isolator on there. So it means we can plug a MIDI cable into it. Search up MIDI input Arduino example. And then I bashed together a weird bit of code that meant we could control a servo with the modulation wheel. Uh, there's a link below to in the description to that code. It's awful. But as you can see right now, I'm cutting a hole in it so we can fit a servo in there. And then after that, I took the original brass or bronze uh, thingamagoop, the gear, and tapped uh, uh, some M3 screw holes in there so it actually fitted to a servo mounting. Then we're going to attach that onto said servo and then put the belt over it and hope for the best. Oh, it's a bit noisy. It's a bit noisy. We need to work on that. Thinking brushless motors next time. Ooh, but it does sound nice. We can't get away from the fact it sounds lovely, though. Yeah, that ain't gonna work, sadly. So I had a look around and found this metal geared continuous servo, but it actually turned out to be noisier than the other one. So we gotta go brushless. Oh, 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 I've now dragged it to the museum. Here it is, it is now set up. And with any luck, we'll get it. The annoying thing is, is the motor that I've just put in it, the new one, the uh, metal one that said it was quiet running, is not quite running at all. In fact, it's it's louder than the other one, so and slower. So we'll swap it back in a sec. But I think I am going to upgrade it. So if anybody's got a good source of a decent brushless motor that is small, got good low speed control, then please comment below that and a decent speed controller because I'm not really up on that stuff. Anyway, how good is that? So that's it today on the vibraphone. Like I said, we're going to find a better alternative to the servo. It's fine at normal vibraphone speeds, but I reckon we can ramp it up to even getting to nearly to ring modulation speeds, which might be kind of weird, kind of funky, worth a, definitely worth an experiment. In the next instalment, we'll be looking at uh, a few of the other instruments, including this one. The beaters aren't on it, of course. And there's another one right here as well, Glockenspiel, and what's this one? The Kroglot. Uh, Kroglot. I think he spelled that wrong. The Kreisker Glot. 
the Kreuzerglot, and then and the Kreuzerglot and the, the Glockenspiel. Yeah. So we'll wire these up in the next Stockdale video. If you want to see this, if you want to see the progress on this stuff before it gets up on the video on the YouTube channel, then definitely go and check out over on my Patreon because it also helps support the museum and stuff like that. And then remember, if you come to the museum, the vibraphone is on MIDI channel five. So remember that if you want to plug something into it. Anyway, have a lovely time. I'm like, I'm no computer. That's the vibraphone. And uh, remember, don't be scared to try it. Have a lovely time. Good